All right, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're going to be looking at the Voyages of Marco Polo. So the theme to this game is we're going to be sort of merchants slash explorers making our way across the map here, fulfilling a bunch of contracts. But it is a Euro, kind of dry. What we're going to be doing is a dice placement game, placing dice in different areas to perform the actions. All right, so this is going to be the setup and rules breakdown video. Click on the link below for my playthrough and my review. Three things before we start. Like usual, please like, subscribe, and comment on my YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. Let's get started. All right, so like usual, you're going to start the setup by laying out your massive game board. All right, so let's take care of all these city setup steps first. All right, so first you have these city cards. Give it a good shuffle, and wherever you see these uh, card spaces on the board, you'll pretty much just place one of these cards. All right, after that, the rest of the cards, throw them back in the box. And you pretty much do the exact same thing with these outpost bonuses, all right? So again, always tied to the areas where you played the cards, you're going to place one of these bonus markers above it. Again, throw the rest in the game box. All right, next, uh, I did forget to mention, I am going to set this up with the expert variant, all right? So uh, with these city bonus markers, there are letters on them. And for your first game, just place them where they belong. For example, this is uh, the E space. So you find the E tile and place it on this uh, space. But for the expert variant, just give it a good shuffle and just place them randomly across the board. In here, all upside down. And there you go. All right, so we're pretty much set to go for the city section let's work our way down you're gonna have five black dice play, place them in this section over here all right and now let's tackle our contracts okay what you're gonna do is you're gonna find all the blue ones and set them aside all right we're gonna deal with this in a couple of seconds next you're gonna set up five sets of six tiles all right the rest go in a special uh, supply over here this is called the special contract supply. And what you're going to do is every single round, you're going to basically take one of these stacks and refill the display over here. So you know that the game is going to last five rounds. So we're going to start round one. We're going to take all these contracts. And we're pretty much going to fill up the display. All right, next. Uh, just for a three player game, you are going to mark the first spot here with a neutral player color. If you're playing a two player game, then you're going to mark off the first two spots. All right. This is ignored during a four and five player game. Now for the rest of the stuff outside the board here, you have your money, you have your camels and other goods on the side of the board. Uh, I like to keep your 50 point cards next to the 50 point space. So when you go around the board, you pick up one of those cards. Sorry, one small change, the number of black die actually matters according to the number of players. So for a three player game, we're only playing with four, put the rest in the game box. All right, so now let's look at the player board area. So you're gonna give each player a player board, uh, five dice of their color, two camels, nine trading posts. You're gonna put one on each of the spots over there. You're gonna figure out who first player is and give them this marker. It's kind of important because the first player is gonna only start with $7. And then each player to their left is gonna get an extra dollar. So uh, the person to his left is going to get eight. The person to his left is going to get nine and so on and so on. All right. Each player is going to get one of these blue contracts. All right. Remember, we separated them at the start and you're going to put one on their one of their two contract spots over here. The rest can get returned back into the game box. All right. You're going to hand everyone four of these end game bonus cards. Uh, this is for an expert variant. They're going to go through their four take two and toss the other two back in the game box. I like to keep my two cards over here. All right, you're gonna put one of their people markers out on the Venezia space over here and the other one's gonna go on the 50 spot of the point track, which is technically zero. And finally, we're gonna talk about the character tiles, which are the game breaking uh, sort of extra special powers you have for the game. All right, so give it a good shuffle. And for the expert variant, what you're gonna do is you're gonna Flip over the number of tiles equal to the number of players plus one. And in reverse draft order, so starting with the last player, they're going to take one of these characters, whichever. Then the third, second to last player is going to take another character. And finally, the first player is going to take one of these characters. Let's just say we took those characters. The last one can get returned back in the box. All right. And this is what your player board should look like. We're pretty much ready to go. 
All right, let's talk about the rules breakdown to Marco Polo. So this is a dice placement game. All right, so just think worker placement, but instead of just generic workers and meeples, uh, we're actually going to be placing our dice. And the die values that we're going to be placing actually matter because they'll sort of tell us the strength of that action. All right, so a typical game round is going to act the same way. At the start of a round, you're going to roll all your dice. You're going to place these dice near your player board area. Then starting with the first player, you'll perform an action with one or more dice. It'll go on to the next player and you're just going to keep looping around till everyone's run out of dice. And that'll trigger the end of the round. All right, now it is possible that you're out of sync with other players uh, with the number of dice in your supply because some spots take more dice than others. In that case, that's fine. Just skip your turn. And again, you just keep going till everyone's run out. All right, the game's going to last exactly five rounds. And we track that with our contract stacks over here. So this is the first stack of contracts for the first round. And round two is going to be this, three, four, and five. Like a typical Euro, at the end of the fifth round, whoever has the most points on the outside of the board here is going to win the game. All right, so... Let's talk about the rules in detail here. So the first section, I'm going to talk about the dice placement rules. All right. And the start of a round because it sort of matters. Then we're going to go through the seven different possible actions you can do and how it ties in the game board and the contracts. All right. Then we're going to talk about the bonuses you can perform because not only can you perform an action on your turn, you're free to perform any number of bonus actions before or after your current main action. And then we're going to finally talk about maybe the cities and end game scoring cards at the end. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's start off by talking about the dice placement rules. All right, so at the start of a round, like I already mentioned, you're going to roll your dice. All right, you're going to place this on the side of your player board. And then starting with the first player, you're going to place your dice on the game board. And you're going to notice a couple of things. All the dice placement spots are going to be one of two colors. Uh, they're going to be indicated on the board, so they're going to be either blue or brown, and they're going to work slightly different. And the spots themselves are going to tell you how many dice are required to perform that action. So, you know, if you want to do a travel action here, you need to send at least two dice into this spot. Right? You can't just send one. The contract one, on the other hand, you need to spend exactly one die to do that action. All right, so let's talk about the two different types of actions here. So there are the brown spaces and the blue spaces. The brown spaces work exactly like most worker placement games that you've probably played in the past. They get blocked as soon as somebody has taken that action, nobody else can go there. That happens a lot in the city up here, but it can also happen down here on the bottom left. The blue spaces on the other hand work completely in the opposite direction multiple players could take that action so let's say green came in here to perform this action then red can also perform this action now if you are the second third or fourth player to perform that action not the first player you do need to pay the bank equal to the die value of the lowest dice that you're placing all right so if you're placing multiple dice you're gonna have to pay equal to the lowest value that you're placing all right, if it is a single worker placement spot, for example, over here, then you just have to pay the cost equal to the die face that you're placing. Okay, and there you go. Other rules tied to these blue sections is each player can only be in that action space one time while their player dice color. All right, so for example, if green and red perform this travel action, they won't be able to perform that action again this round until the round resets. Now, a way to get around this is to use black dice, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit in the following section. All right, and the last thing to really talk about is the strength of the action that you're performing. It's always tied to the dice that you're placing. So for example, if you're placing a five in the contract over here, the strength of that action is equal to five. Now for any dice placement spots that have multiple dice, it is really important to realize that the strength is gonna be equal to the lower number that you're placing there. So even though I place a five and a one, the strength of this action is gonna be only a one. All right, it's the same as placing a one and a two. All right, but if I would have played a four and a five, then the strength of this action would be a four. All right, you can pretty much see this better in detail if I played it here then you will get more goods for the strength of dice that you're placing 
All right, so now let's talk about all the actions you can do on the bottom of the game board over here. I'm not gonna talk about the city actions. We're gonna talk about that at the end of the video, uh, but these are just placing one die to perform an action type of spots. They're pretty generic uh, and we'll get to them later. All right, the first part we're gonna talk about is the bizarre space over here. So again, as I mentioned in the uh, overview here, the number of dice you need to place is indicated on the left over here. So if you wanted some camels, it would only take cost you one die to place uh, the brown resource will cost you one die but the purple one is two and gold is three okay and it's pretty simple after you place your dice you're gonna look at the strength of that and remember in the previous section I talked about the strength of the dice that you're placing in this scenario here would be only one you look down the line and you get that many resources you know using the chart all right in this example here let's say it was a four and a five so the strength here would be four, because I have two fours and a five. All right, so the lowest number is four. I'll go down the line, and on the fourth spot here, I will get the number of resources indicated. So I'll take it from the general supply and add it to my personal supply. Some of these spots here, you get extra bonuses. So there are sp some spots where you get extra money as well. And then here, there is a uh, movement on the city board up here. You get to move one extra time. All right, but all four spots work exactly the same way. All right, next let's talk about the three spots down here because they're pretty simple. Uh, the money action here, you play a die to get five coins. All right, the cons favor section over here, this is where you cannot uh, place on top of other players' dice. So you always have to play a die equal to or greater than a die that was previously there. So for example, if red played a three here to get this action uh, done, then somebody else can play a four and it would have to be equal or higher value following again. All right, when all the spots are filled up, nobody else can perform this action. All right, just a summary of the actions, you get one of any type of good, and then you also pick up two camels from the general supply, add them to your personal supply. All right, and the last action down here is the contract action. All right, so the power that you're putting in is equal to sort of the range of contracts that you could take. All right, so by putting a four, I can take any of the one through four contracts into my personal supply. Now you're gonna see here, there is a note. If you do have spots for two contracts, you can actually pick up two contracts. So you can pick up one or two contracts, but remember the only ones available to you are equal to your power. All right, so let's say I didn't have any contracts. I can take two contracts and put them on my player board. All right, after somebody takes contracts, this whole uh, sort of display slides down. All right. If you do take a contract in sp space five or six, you do get a benefit. So five, you'd get an extra coin or a camel from the general supply. And six, you get $2 or two camels from the general supply. All right, and finally we get to the last main action you can perform, which is the travel action. That's moving your character along the game board up here. All right, so like we mentioned multiple times, the lower value that you're placing there is the strength of the action. So in this example here, I can perform this action on the on the game board. Uh, just as a general note, just like the contracts, you could pick a lower strength action instead of the one that you're uh, placing. So in this example, let's say I want to do the second spot action here. Now, before moving, you do need to pay. So moving your character on the game board will cost you money. So in this example here, I would have to pay $7 into the general supply. And then the mark at the bottom here, the person moving with the number, will tell you how many times he can move on the game board. So what you're doing when you're moving your character is following the white lines and you're moving from uh, Oasis, which are the tents, to cities, which could be large or small cities. Large ones are the ones with cards and the small ones are the blue ones. All right, so uh, other things to note when you're moving on the game board is there could be extra costs so either money or camels so to move let's say from this one to this one it will cost you three camels if you do not have the resources you cannot perform that movement all right besides that you're free to move however you like now there is a bonus when you end your movement in a city all right so in this example let's say i'm moving two i paid my seven dollars i'll move twice and i'm going to go visit this large city all right, now when visiting any city, uh, if you don't already have a trading post there, you're gonna end up placing a trading post on the game board. All right, the trading posts, you always start taking them from the left and work your way to the right. 
All right, the eighth and ninth spot are gonna give you extra victory points, but we'll get to that later in the video. All right, now, whenever visiting a large city, if there is any outpost bonus still there, which means you're the first one to visit that city, what you're gonna do is you're gonna discard this to the game box and you're gonna get the benefit. In this case, it would be three camels, take from the general supply. And then after I would add my trading post to the city uh, as indicated there. Uh, you can only be in each city one time. Uh, so even if you leave that city and come back, you do not add another trading post. All right, large cities basically just unlock uh, extra dice placement areas uh, that only you can go to while the people who have trading posts there can send their die there and you can start using that as soon as your next turn All right. when visiting a blue city though this is a bit different you're going to add your trading post like usual and you're going to gain the benefit of the blue city right away uh, when you visit it so again in this case it would be more camels All right. The added benefit of the blue cities, the exclamation points in this game, basically mean um, at the start of the round, you're going to also gain that benefit. So that three camels I would gain when visiting that city, and at the start of every single round, I'd also get three camels. And there you go. You just move from spot to spot. If you end your movement in a city, uh, you drop off one of your trading posts, and that's about it. All right, now is a good time to talk about bonus actions. Okay, so on your turn, you're performing a main action, all right, which is placing your dice in one of the blue or brown spots on the board. But before you perform your main action, or even after you perform your main action, you can perform as many bonus actions as you like. And the bonus actions are all indicated on your player aid over here. So let's just go through them in detail here. All right, so the first uh, one you can do is complete a contract. All right, so at any point, either before or after your action, uh, what you're gonna do is if you look at your contracts here and you can um, satisfy the contract, which means turning in all the goods that are on the left-hand side, all right, you're gonna turn in the contract by getting the benefits on the right-hand side, which are the points and the extra bonuses, and then you're gonna place the contract on your contract stack over here. All right, so again, that you can perform either before or after your action. The other bonus action is placing any die on the money bag spot over here. Doesn't really matter the number. Any number of players can go there. You don't have to pay by playing dice there. You're just going to get three coins from the general supply. The next one is you can uh, pay one camel to re-roll any of your dice. So let's say you rolled, uh, you have these two dice left over and you really needed a five or a six you can pay one camel into the general supply to take any of your dice and give it a good roll. The other option is to pay two camels to adjust the value of a die by one. So either up or down. So I can pay two camels, for example, turn this four, uh, three into a four. And finally, what you can do is turn in three camels into the general supply to take up any of the black dice, give it a roll, and then place it into your general supply. All right, now let's tackle what happens at the end of a round and at the beginning of a round. So the end of a round is pretty simple. You're only going to do one thing. Just clear off all the contracts that were left and not taken. You're going to throw these back in the game box. You're going to grab the new stack of six tiles and you're going to fill up the display. All right, now for the start of a round, you're going to follow the same four steps. All right, the first thing you're going to do is figure out who the next first player is. And it's not going to go in sort of turn order what's going to happen is you're going to look at the top set of dice so the last person to do a travel action the previous turn is going to become the new first player all right if you're not stacking up your dice like this you just have to sort of remember who took the last travel action you give them the, uh, the first player marker all right um, after that what you're going to do is you're going to get the benefits from the blue cities slash your special powers all right so anywhere that you see an exclamation point that you do have a uh, trading post you're going to get the benefit now so it could be goods coins points or camels all right you're going to score that now all right next you're going to take back all your dice back into your supply so just take back all your dice uh, the black dice go back to the supply up here okay keep in mind if you are playing less than four to keep the neutral dice where they're supposed to be you're not going to take these back and lastly, for the start of a round, the last thing you're going to do is roll your dice. Okay, 
Now there's a special rule. If you ever roll under 15, like if you have a really bad roll. So for example here, I rolled a seven. All right, there's a special compensation rule. For every number under 15, you either get a camel or a dollar your choice. All right, so let's say I rolled, let's roll a bit higher. <laughs> let's say I rolled an 11. All right, I'm below 15 by four. So I can take four camels or four coins or two coins and two camels or three camels and a coin. You just get to decide the distribution you want. And then after that, you're ready to start the round. All right, you'll take, take back your dice without changing them. All right, everyone does that. And then you can start the round. All right, finally, we'll talk about end game scoring. So after five rounds, when all these stacks are completed and you finish the round, that'll trigger the end game. All right, so uh, you're sort of going to score a couple of things. And the first thing you're going to score is everyone's going to have two of these bonus cards and you're going to score them. Now, a couple of things you're going to score on these cards. First, if you are able to have trading posts on both of the indicated cities on a card, you'll score the points on the right. All right, so if I have both of these, I'll score five points. And if I had both of these, I would score seven points. All right, the second thing you're going to do with these cards, all right, you're sort of going to align them like this. And you can see four cities on the cards. All right. The marker down here pretty much tells you what you need to accomplish. So if you only visited one of these four cities, you're going to score one point. If you visited two of these cities, three points and so on and so on. If you visited all of them, you're going to score 10 points. Now, there's a very important rule. If you have cities that are multiple times on two different cards, they do not count. So even if I visited these three cities, because these cities appear twice, Technically, I would have four check marks, but I would still only get the six points because there's only three unique cities on this card. All right, so that's how you score these cards. And after you score them, you give yourself the points and you can toss these back in the box. All right, next, you're going to score one point for every 10 gold you have left. All right, next, whoever completed the most contracts is going to get an extra seven points. All right, and lastly, you're going to score Beijing. So wherever your trading house is on Beijing you're gonna score the indicated number of points on the spot all right so if you're the first one in Beijing you'll get 10 7 4 and then 1 so on and so on all right and then whoever has a trading post in Beijing and this only works if you have a trading post in Beijing you can actually get a point for every two goods you have left over in your supply all right you cannot do that if you don't have a trading post in Beijing all right and there you go Whoever has the most points after scoring those endgame points is going to win the game. All right, there are a couple of miscellaneous rules that I didn't mention throughout the video, and I'll tackle them now. Uh, just to be clear about the black dice, all right, when you take one and you roll them and you add them to your supply, just pretend that they're your colored dice. Um, the only thing they break is the rule if you are supposed to be in a section only once, you can actually use a black die because your color, it doesn't stand as your color, but you can attach them to other dice of your color to go in other spots. All right, it's, I know it's a little hard to understand, but let's say you went in here first with a five. Technically, you wouldn't be able to take this action again, but you could use a black die to take this action again. All right, on the other hand, if you really needed another die, what you can do is put the black and the red together and do an action on the board. All right, sort of like this or like this. Okay, now the other rule that I didn't mention throughout the video, very important because a lot of people miss this rule. Whenever you gain a contract, so whether it is through other contracts or through different abilities on the board over here, you never take them from the display. You always take them from one of the eight special contracts stacked on the side of the board. All right, there's only eight of them, so when they run out, too bad, but uh, you just take the top one and you add it to your supply, you don't get to choose. 